Hi there, Zip here with your daily highlights. Today we have LGS highlights group stages the first day. And for those who don't know the system, I'm gonna try to explain you really quick and then I will let you enjoy the highlights. So basically we have a big group with 40 teams that are battling each other in the group stages. And from that big group of 40 teams, the top 20 teams will be the winners and will go in the winner's bracket and the bottom 20 will be the losers, which will go in the elimination bracket bracket so yeah basically the losers will then play a series of games and after that the bottom 10 will be eliminated out of the lgs and uh, the top 10 will fight with the losers from the winner bracket and basically this is the round two of eliminations and the top 10 will go into finals and the bottom 10 well you guessed it will be eliminated so yeah, basically this is the system in the finals will be a mesh point, which I guess everybody knows by now. And yeah, this is pretty much it. I will let you now enjoy the highlights and I will see you in the next one. See you. That's certainly the case. I mean, when you realize exactly how many threats are around you, it's difficult as an IGL to intake all of the most relevant information. It's the constant challenge of the role and now you've got access to it yourself. Legends pop their heads out and a nice job making sure that they keep high ground to themselves. They start the fight off well. Nask, he's already got a what? great angle and VK Gaming really do not get to play Apex Legends. They walk up disrespectfully towards a spot that you know Legends should be holding just fine. Nasky disrespecting anyone? Like, what do you mean? I'm calling him Look Legends in pajamas for real. Then Nagil, despite that initial reset, they make their way over towards Skyhook, and this is the punishment that Fuse can enact on you. Once you just have these knuckle clusters stacked and you immediately get someone cracked, you just start full sending those, and this is where the mobile respawn beacons are that so great. That is a crazy mobile respawn fun there is no way that guild are gonna pull that off and i say that like sort of hoping oh. against hope that they do it anyway much in the same way that i'm hoping for tyler as he tyler? off to the shield oh. swap, and he almost gets the kill finished off just in time that was almost disastrous for fennel and he was just so locked what? in and confident with it. Yeah, no, this is free, right? How are we getting this? Welcome back, Guildy Sports. Let's full send a full reset inside of Skyhook. Now, you have to think about where they're positioned. Because the circle keeps pulling so far north, they're on that south side towards the choke. Of course, everyone is going to look at this. My question is, who's going to be the first one to maybe send one or two players over? SSE X-Ray would be the closest team to be able to do so. And X and Y, who were looking at Guild from the other side, have taken an evac tower into the the ring so there is a little bit of movement that guild can make towards the west to get out of here alive but they lose mt immediately jesco can't really put up a defense and we're back down to this duo of jesco and legacy that were starting on guild that picked up mt and now have to rely on just each other again and we have the ring at our back. We have to go forward. There's nothing we can do about MT, but for Guild Esports right now, game number one on World's Edge is that regain blender that sometimes you just find yourself just trying to claw out of, and it's not a healthy environment to go through. For them, you just want to play the game, and instead, you just get EMP'd. I, and it's going to happen again and again and again for as long as Guild are living in this game because they've got no cover. Everyone has scouted them. They're being shot on the side by X and why legends grab the kill and with just jesco left with watson fences between him and safety he will go down never touching zone number four exo still alive managed to play underneath the central building in skyhook as not moist take a reset on the eastern side this is crazy they're able to do this especially using that knuckle cluster to kind of isolate that area you do not want striders to be able to drop down on them and let me just tell you all of my time watching striders and scrims they are a very conservative almost like a passive team they only want to take the fights that are going to be guaranteed to not necessarily have a ton of teams immediately into them that's a difficult thing for not moist because they're their exit towards the north is going to be really heavily fence dependent as so many rotations during the next zone close will be even falcons who are sat in relative safety now will have to just like ghs just like legends make their way out towards the north with the only cover being fences and the real difficulty being who's going to coordinate how you rotate out relative to the other teams. Falcons look safe right now, but if they pick the same fence as GHS, if they pick the same fence to play as Legends, 
both those teams are mutually assured their own destruction. Hear me out. We have 13 squads still up. We're about to go down to six, maybe seven in the next 30 or so seconds as we see this mass exodus come out of the donut building here in survey. So this fight is vital considering in that initial series for Falcons, they Good only knocks. got nine points across the entirety of World's Edge and we are just fragging X and Y falls and we're already north of six eliminations. Jen Burton cannot fall here. We need to make sure that Zero gets out but the Mastiff, it connects down behind the gold knockdown. This is another brilliant reason for them. I think Can we it. do the dance around the Mastiff and round the gap? In the smoke. Oh, he was healing for just a bit. But in comes Bleed and out they go. Team Falcons go down as do Legends. With just Amphi left, he slides on by Exo. And we've got even more action brewing as around these fences there is chaos. Nasky last alive on the Wraith has got to hold the banner up for Legends. TSM go down, Exo go down. Seven squads are left and Fennel are picking up the pieces before being picked up themselves. Well, we're going down to six. Top six is Fennel fall. We knew that mass exodus was going to cost all of our teams trying to get out of that building. This is going to be crazy and the mobility that Kirev on the Pathfinder locks in for them. If we kick this off with another win for them, maybe we can get another second, but defense lines, we told oh, you, no. as the X-ray, they can take angles from here. High ground is key. And that, that is really not good. It opens things up for Striders when they should never have had a shot. SSE should have controlled so much ground, but they get picked off from high ground, and it is just over for them. They are taken down with now four squads left. It's Striders who are in control of the lobby, now having to move out into the line of fire of Echolos, who have got high ground for so long. This could be another South American win we're casting in our first game on World's Edge. Yeah. It really could. They pop over the fence and Cure of just lets the nemesis go. The Mozambiques from this distance at the Akimbo will be a more difficult connect, but Moist is already looking at cleaning up some of Striders, but now everyone just full sends and you're just kind of waiting. You don't want to be the next team that starts this fight because that means you're essentially going to go out for maybe, what, one or two eliminations, but you want more of those placement points from second and first. It's all about who's dropping and when it's happening. Watson fences are going to be essential here, and C9 are just waiting for their chance to go down, but they cannot jump straight into Not Moist, and now it's E. Cholos to take matters into their own hands, jumping down with the new castle wall. Brutus stays alive with the mobile shield in the smoke. He's got a massive and a dream. A wall to protect him, but it ain't enough. Each holos lose one, lose two. It's down to Korov, and they go down. Moist come in, but they get cleaned up, and it's C9. Let's go ahead and pull up those match one results. A 16-point game, able to grab four eliminations from that. Not Moist, a 16-point game as well, going out in second. But, some but it's a really difficult place to just fully take a fight, and Falcons should be able to, out of it, actually play relatively safely. And... Cut, the, cut their losses either way. If this pulls out of Countdown, they've got access to that. If this pulls into Countdown, they've, all, they've always got the opportunity to close the vertical gap onto Exo Clan and take that fight. I don't think Exo is going to full send this at all, though. Sure, you're going to throw up your drone and look for that information and say, I know there is a squad here. And the only reason they look kind of OK right now is because of that sh that overloaded shield, right? Mm -hmm. Finally pops up to beat. But oh, I say it, and they prove me wrong. They decide to full jump down, and the EMP comes through. You get stunned for one to two seconds, and that is going to cost you. But as soon as Buda tries to make a play for that, he loses his shield and most of his HP. And now Slayers is on the low ground as an overextended Watson. And yet, Falcons have lost two so far. Swinney tries to swing to finish this off, and it doesn't quite work, but Feuda wow. manages to make it happen. Exo take priority in this engagement. They don't wait for Falcons to come to them. They go to the Falcons, they take the risk, and they win. Go down the ult, a couple Watson fences. That makes for a more difficult push. But it'll make, yeah, make things a little bit easier for each of to hang on to this, and that Newcastle, notably, something that is big missing from the Falcons roster, oh. not moist. Take the fight up in Skyhook, and while they lose one, they've still got the chance to claw their way back into this fight. TSM have lost some as well, and not moist. Stick the reset as TSM go down fully with Legends helping out. Guild desperately trying to do that from the eastern side. They are facing up against Noctum Scan, who have sat in this open area since the start of the game. And Guild, while they look good, have just eaten an EMP for their trouble. 
I was not expecting just us to go down like that. We've got a, a we have the devotion, we have hammer pointed Kimbo Mozambiques, we have the ability to send out so much damage, and we just saw the MT interview and what he brings to the table. But that is going to be so difficult because you know there's gonna be other teams. The oh moment they finish, it's Echolos. Not only they were aggressive in map number one, but Brutus goes, I got a PK and I know how to use it. What timing? Kurev with the zip line just full sends him in there. Echolos really learning from their first series as to when they need to take fights, how quickly it needs to happen. Alliance go down, Moist are the ones to do it to him, and each Solos serve up defeat to Guild. CK looking up top. They know Legends are here, and we've got a nice evac that could position Legends okay. in a great spot. This is either going to go fantastically or Boy. absolutely horribly. Having lost Amphi, I think I know where it's leaning and landing right next to Nosebox huh? as well. This is looking rough for Legends. nasty has got no shields, but a catalyst wall thrown out by another team gives him some survivability. Player K is eating damage, and in comes the portal. Nasty sending it back down onto the low ground. This is temporary survival for legends it is not a good spot no this is a reactive play instead of a proactive play and yeah you can pop the portal back up to the high ground but you're just gonna get picked off and legends gaming falls phase are the ones to pick up some of those kills as well phase who predicted this zone to a t who are playing out of god's spot just like they did in emea oh phase this is going to be such a stellar game for you, locking it down with all the watts and fences. But let's see where we have to move first, because we can kind of hold on to this for the majority. But Liquid Alien, we're back on the low ground. Do we get the shield swap? We do. And can the reset come through? Not Moist has fallen. We have a ton of eliminations, and we still have a member of Guild on that south side. Team Liquid managing to reset here could even pick up that last member of Guild. There's not that many sight lines onto them. FaZe are unlikely to give up the high ground and Team Liquid continue to reset. Bleed, try and make a cross towards Team Liquid, but everyone in the lobby is looking at them, and this whole low ground is devolving. It is a very difficult situation to control. The real focus has to be on height, where each solos, where FaZe, where Exo Clan will fight for who actually gets to win the game, Tiff. Can we talk about Team Liquid and Bleed right now? We have neighboring Newcastles on the low ground, and we're basically just set up shop in our little cardboard box walls pointing at each other. Phase Clan has to move immediately after this, so we filter out. It's each Holos on the other side. Exo Clan is going to be the detrimental thorn in the side to the teams on the low ground because they don't have to move, but we can keep kind of peeking on over and trying to take angles. But the issue is, feuda has got to load out for up close, right? Sure, we're going to hold the bangle, but we're running RE45 shoddy. This comes down to Newcastle wall positioning. Exo should be in a great position to third part of the high ground, and even then, they're getting a little greedy, picking up kills on the low ground looking for whatever points they can collect because this is a game where EXO can go massive, where they can reverse their position in the standings. But we have no ammo. We literally have no ammo. 26 bullets. We have to save this for an up-close fight, and there's no guarantee, but we get climbed up on, and out of the ring they go. Do enough to push them back on down, but the fence must come through, and it does. Now, Slayers. to make that YOLO play, each YOLOs did give up the high ground, so it's just EXO and phase left here a pathfinder zip behind them still available for each of those exo are playing safe but it should be just down to exo and phase as to who controls the high ground liquid go down it's bleed to take them out and the teams drop lower and lower as exo clan take a fight in the smoke each solos go out and it's just exo and phase on high ground exo drop down phase are the last ones on the high ground and Slayers is now a solo, and Nose Fox comes it's in. A phase they win. tear them out. FaZe, who take that brilliant location in counter. They just need to clear out the rest of it. It's a solo from Guild, the remnants of Noah's Fox, and they just have to wait it out. And that Devo is going to shred through them. From second seed in EMEA, FaZe have finally found their step in this land. Split two playoffs is looking good as they come down and they claim victory in game number two. A 20-point game is fantastic, especially when compared to our first couple. That top of the leaderboard, though, still dominated by Not Moist, who have continued their rampage from earlier on. And of course, with FaZe 
right behind them. Hal already on the climb up, and in comes that EMP. It's the perfect fight setup that we talked about, but each Cholos do not take a lot of damage, Zero. even with the EMP, and they Nine. strike back in a big way, taking down Zero. Yeah, but Cloud9 from the west side completely griefed this fight. If mm -hmm. you think about it, they saw that EMP go through. They saw the rotation from Falcons immediately wanting to push, and the next thing you know, Zero gets his shield ripped off him. He has to go for the bat. That's five seconds, and he's out in the open, unable to get in the building, and they, in a way, just save Cholos. So with an ult down now, Falcons do not have nearly as easy of a time picking this engagement. Do they use another ult excel to try and make the fight onto Cholos happen? Or do they wait here for other teams to rotate into them? Because at this point, I almost favor that decision. Wanting to give other teams space to move up on them as the zone gets smaller and smaller. Squads like TSM increasingly getting close to Not Moist were separ separated by a, albeit rather thick, rock wall. Speaking of like rock walls, boulders, TSM here in the north. Now, I'm a little nervous about this position because you think about where Not Moist was inside that tunnel. Bleed has actually moved towards the other side of it. This can be one of those areas where you all just kind of run into each other and then GHS will likely be able to take line of sight straight towards them. So using kind of these cargo bin structures around them is going to be, well, quite interesting to see how they navigate that. The TSM's decision is ultimately going to come down to do we go for Grandma's house or do we try and play underneath Mo not moist, moist, whatever we're going with here, in inside that tunnel, and just hope that we get to share space with them. Ultimately, that's what this is going to come oh. down to. But Hello. FaZe's game has just changed for the better. Kraber in hand now. They've got the opportunity, the singular opportunity, to pick a fight off of one bullet and find themselves so much more loot and a better position to boot. Good thing we got a Jenny down. Hopefully it doesn't get destroyed, right? Because this allows you to focus on healing with the med kit, syringes, whatever it is, before regaining your shield. But the, I would love to see some nasty Kraber shots come through. And well, for a lot of our teams that called zone based off ring one, ring two, now is the time to see, did we pull tunnel? Do we pull out of it? Whose rotation is going to look better? For me, I'm really loving the train tracks and everyone might want where ExoClan is. C9 juggling a lot of things as well. They are likely gonna have some of the toughest routes up to near where ExoClan are playing, where Alliance very well could make it happen now. Sliding on in through this high ground. They've got an isolated 3v3 up against X and Y, and uh, X and Y are not coming out on the better end of it. Definitely not. I'm sorry. Unlucky gets behind enemy lines here and wants to do some fulls here with the Akimbo Mozambique. That's two eliminations right there. And, well, they evicted him straight out of tunnel. Another lone survivor of a fight makes it on out. It's only a matter of time. Tyler already posted up as well, keeping guard, making sure that other teams don't rotate up from Monument, who might have wanted to get a piece of the action. We're not seeing anybody do that, though, because so many teams have already identified that they are going to need to leave through the north side of Monument, not wasting time towards the south side, trying to make some rotation, some weird KP play happen. It's just Alliance down here, and now Alliance are faced with a difficult choice. Will they be able to move up and maybe take this area away from FaZe, or will they be faced with the journey onto low ground. In fact, I'll go so far as Wait. to say it may not be their choice because if FaZe smell Alliance coming, there's a Kraber here to dissuade the rotation from Alliance. X and Y, the solo gets picked up. It looks like Imperial Howl was able to grab another KP for Team Falcons, but did we see how reserved we were with that Kraber shot? We were essentially using it to scout out what was going on over at Monument, and now we see the Dark Veil come through. It allows Liquid Alienware to rotate up with the guys of that cover. Now, with the Rolling Thunder incoming, we have to focus on getting reset here before we can push, because not only that, but that Rolling Thunder gives you that stun for just a second or two, which can be a little hard to work around. Gonna be losing the cat wall soon, but Liquid Alien, where they knew there was someone behind them, didn't know exactly where. Now see SSE drop down, and they drop too. This does not look good for SSE, who on the low ground don't have a whole lot of ways out. 
There's not a lot of forgiveness here, and Liquid Alienware certainly are not the team to give it to you. Alliance do go down on the other side of the ring, so as Liquid Alienware claims some kills, that very same phase fight that we teased with Alliance does kick off on the east side. That's crazy. They tried to make a move towards phase, and a third party's already Another there. Kramer Nax side. is down, but it connects, and okay, the hip fire can't send it. Clutch it on up for phase, especially after you win oh. the last game. You should go massive. Can what we keep that? it going? Oh. Dream, but your Newcastle stays alive. What is that hell? Try and clutch things up. And this is like the same angle we saw phase taking with the Kraber of their own. Now, this is going to be difficult here, knowing that you don't have a Watson, you're not going to be able to throw a Jenny, and all of these incoming nades can prove difficult. Now, if Zero lands a Kraber shot through the smokes just by guessing, it would be wild. But to the north we go, not moist and bleed meat again. The battle of the north has fallen, but bleed esports comes out on top. And TSM start moving towards the bridge. We were wondering what they would do in the same corner as Not Moist, but with Not Moist not existing anymore, TSM have the unique opportunity to take control of the north side. They don't quite take it. They don't quite send bleed, but what they do get in exchange is a lot of space towards the top side of the map. And with an EMP getting sent towards bleed, TSM know there's a team there. You got to look for third parties here. If TSM want to win this game, if they want to move up the leaderboards, they have got to be looking for opportunities to third party other fights. Well, I mean, just keep an eye on what's going on. Bleed Esports over there doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of health. And then you look at Noctum and they are getting poked by absolutely everyone. Not only is it Team Liquid Alienware, but it's all also TSM and Bleed, oh, they no. try to send down onto that, but we get sniped from a distance, and here comes Shuby. Around the knockdown we go, Noctum is down, but then we immediately get picked up by Zap. And with Noct already being spotted, Bleed have signed their own death warrants. There's not a whole lot more they can do in this game. Sending it across the open ground was a one-way trip, and I think Dropped and Shuby had to know it, because they've been playing Apex for long enough. Noct is unlikely to get them back in the fight, though I will acknowledge it's a remote possibility. The real focus has shifted towards the south, where Team Falcons have made their way into the next zone, ever okay. so close to Exo. And Zero, landing the Kraber shots, has yet to open things up for a fight, but... That doesn't mean you can't go fishing. Look at Nick in the back. Like, he is about to lose it. Absolutely. This is going to be a big shift to them. So let's jump into a Falcons listening. I'm going to be now. Go on, Annie! Oh, one tiny, one tiny, Newcastle. Get nice. I'm going to smoke out back. I'm going to get fine. They're playing out of sight. They're playing out of sight. Playing out of sight. We're good. They're not coming in. Playing out of sight. What about left? What about left? You see left at all, yeah? Yeah, look left. They're eating over here. Free kills, free kills. Fighting left side. Free kills. We were good. So you tracked? Yeah. Back follow me. One shot. No, I died. Fuck. Anyone else? There's one still there. One still there. There's one someone on flush there. There's someone there. There's someone low ground. Yeah, I died. He just died. There's a team high. Hey, full team low ground. Like, ready at them. Ready at them. Yeah, this crate. Blue crate. Find the crate. They're running forward. They're running forward. Look, 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 one, 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 one. one more! Fuse, 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 fuse! Dead, dead, kill them! One more, one more! Left side! Join the left side, Jen! No, right now! Okay, oh, I'm joining, I'm joining, I'm joining, I'm joining! Yeah, one sec! Sorry. Yeah, are we on left side? Sorry. Uh, the, no, Wait, no, we get no one! On? No one! There's a solo behind there! Yes, yes, there's a solo! Yeah, there's only a solo! No one left side! We can, you thirst, guys! You thirst, you thirst! Please, I don't have a spray gun! I don't have ammo, they're fucking shoot! Yeah, I got it! I have 20 heavy! Save me, my drone! It's a duo, it's a duo, it's a duo! It's a duo! Solar. Coming no, he, 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 he scanned two. Behind the fucking wall. One hundred percent two. Yeah, 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 there is, there is. You have a pistol? Yeah, I do, I do. I just play them. We kill them. We play that. No? Uh, yeah, we can. Don't take it. Well, there's one thing you know about Imperial Hal is that he's not going to go to an end game with ammo, that's for sure. Whether it's light or it's heavy, we're going to have about 30 and three bullets left in the Kraber. A lot of information there, but it's each holos that have the high ground, and Exo has defended the train tracks for God knows how long. Liquid Alienware made a move for it, but the res coming in from this angle because no one is going to be able to look at them. Gold Knockdown doing a lot of favors for each holos, and Exo have this sword in their side that they just can't get 
out East Solos, and Exo will fight, and it opens things up for Falcons to take on TSM. We already know TSM is weak. They lost one earlier, and the Kraber from Zero has set this up perfectly. Hal manages to round the corner with the Mozams. Zap is down. TSM have got one member left, and TSM are down. Falcons make the top three. East Solos and Exo still alive, and already fighting each other as Jen Burton contributes to the fight. Exo lose one. Exo lose a two as incoming East Solos going down. Falcons swoop in. Falcons should be taking game three as they make a massive recovery on World's Edge. No wins in that first series for them in A versus B. It, it almost seems like a classic Falcons win, doesn't it? They just destroy everything in their path on the way to getting 28 points and with 16 kills. I mean, they weren't getting to that end game. They weren't getting to the dub without that uh, absolute mountain of skulls that they built it on. Because everyone else is and may start trending towards more kind of traditional picks. Well, Falcons, they're trying to take space inside a wall right now, but they're going to get through Legacy. And Legacy takes down Zero, takes down Hal as well. And we know that that means that Jim Burton will be on his lonesome. A huge, huge play from him. Falcons will be eliminated after their win. They will be out the lobby first. The Pathfinder making sure that they can find their way to zone, even when it felt like they would have to go through a number of teams. But they use that zip line. They find somewhere safe for now. As Legends Gaming, well, they've got to fight. I like that you say for now, because they certainly will be vulnerable once teams start to approach. But Legends Gaming need to be the team that forces their way out here. The Newcastle is going to begin to path their way, but now you've got to do the damage. Damage starts to come in. Amphi will find one. Still up to a full three themselves. Elsewhere, you can see that no sparks have gone down themselves. 18 squads now remaining as they do get that kill confirmed themselves. Striders will also fall. And with 17 squads now in this lobby, that is going to change very, very quickly. Liquid Alienware will be eliminated as well as they try and force their way into zone. A lot of battles going in and around the front of Command Center and inside of it right now. No moisture on the backside of it as Alliance now, they will zip towards this fight. They will look at a third party or maybe look at just to find some KP. I think this was clever from Alliance. I think they were too vulnerable in the previous spot, so they look to try and actually be proactive with their positioning here, try and maybe pick up some kills, but they are being shot from elsewhere and a lucky's gone down. Moist is gonna be the team who gets involved with this, Tyler, trying to spray, and spray he will. A huge amount of damage being done, but Hackers has decided that it's survival that becomes the name of the game for Alliance. Can he get around this corner, get stunned on his way forward and has to take the six, seven seconds needed to pop this Phoenix kit? Always heart and a mouth moment. Manages to get it done and will survive here for Alliance. And now he will just want to get into zone, go invisible, try and get banners and see if he can survive. He cannot. Alliance are eliminated in 16th. By the way, Case Winnie has done the job with the invis invisibility cloak and he will now get top 15. So that is at least one point guaranteed. But now you've got to go, Swinney. You need to move. Has to leave that forklift behind. Boy, do they have some stories to tell as they move through the rest of the Apex Legends Global Series. But for now, Case Winnie will still be alive. And now he finds himself with another placement point as well. Nasky will go down here on the rotate from Legends Gaming that we saw from the bottom of that zipline building as FaZe kind of now moved to the outside of Command Center and are trying to pin the team that's inside. That's going to be knocked him. Legends eliminated. SEX Ray are eliminated as well. And now FaZe Clan, who were the team pinned earlier, are now doing the pinning. And they're in a really good spot here. They can potentially get KP and also have this side of the zone as now Guild go down as well. 11 squads remaining. Almost half the lobby has been taken care of. TSM have somehow managed to wrap their way inside of this building themselves. The Swinney story will end, as will Exo Clans. They will be eliminated, but more placement points brilliantly, you have to say. You were picked up by him on that way from what was a perilous and horrible position early on after losing that fight. It will at least put them one point closer to Team Falcons, but sadly not the game that they would have wanted to try and catch up. As now, you spoke about TSM. They will have this northeast side, but they are joined by VK Gaming. XNY have a solo nearby, as do Exolo's Laser. So there are two teams nearby with a rat, and you'd imagine could be Cryptos. Tom Moist looking to move up onto the position of Phase and Noxum, who were playing outside of Command Center for so long, and even though both teams have been waiting to fight, well, Waltzy just wanders in and takes care of everyone. FaZe Clan eliminated, he wants the final kill as well. One more player left inside of that building from Noxum, 
And Not Moist will perform the perfect third party as GHS Professional will also fall. Yeah, just like that, seven squads now remain. Fennel have a solo center zone as Not Moist looks to just clean up the pieces that you were mentioning. They will have the entirety of the southeast here and actually a really good way to push into the zone because they have coverage from the mountain. All those northern teams won't be able to see Not Moist until the last second. So they should all focus each other, which should leave Not Moist open to really move in for themselves. Atenum still alive, by the way. Just inside of that building. Moist wouldn't have forgotten about him. They know that there's one player still alive from that team. As now we turn our attention to the fight that's going down elsewhere. You can see TSM now climbing up, looking to get some damage themselves. The Mozambique shots are going to be pretty good. And that will be a replay coming in from the push that they did make. So now you can see it's reps with those Mozambiques doing a huge amount of damage. And that was how GHS Professional were taken care of by TSM. Well, now TSM have to move down this zip line or at least the area. Maybe they could slide down if they would like as well. You see XNY and Nocton both being eliminated. Now it's down to four because Fennel go down as well. It's Cloud9 versus Not Moist in the center of the zone happening right now, by the way. Each other's laser just as a solo. The other two solos in this game were taken care of in those previous moments. The C9 trying to use the cover of that big rock in and around center zone to survive until they are forced to engage. TSM will be eliminated by C9. As now Not Moist moved down from the high ground. Two squads remaining. Devo in the hands of Gilderson as well. You can see C9 still alive on that low ground. Again, Evac Tower down, but look at this man. He's going to work. Gil finds one, Finny finds two, and Gil just needs to find the final player here. And it will be Not Moist who should take this one home. Not Moist just need one, they find one, and Not Moist will be your champions. You hit the nail on the head as we take a look at our match results. 14 kills alongside the 12 points for placement for Not Moist. Gives them a total of 26 C9 with 16 just in behind them. And I mentioned how they've been going about their business. You can see the series results there at the moment after four games, 51 points for Not Moist. This is a big gap that they've now created with them, between themselves and Falcons. And suddenly they hand over that towards Falcons and say, all right, we're asking the question, do you have the answer in match five? Well, I, have, I just got to say, this is a really tough zone to try and navigate. All these teams who have moved to the northern side of this zone, by the way, are probably thinking it could go towards Stormcatcher or the cannon just below it. And now they're going to have to all fight through each other to leave the POI to get anywhere near that zone. On the other side of things, Not Moist are probably thinking, even though we're all the way over in Barometer at the moment and having to take a fight, seeing that zone pool gives them an opportunity to arrive late to the party, much like they did in the previous game. But first of all, they've got to deal with this fight, and it's against X and Y. Yep, the Mad Maggie is there. You can see the riot drills, so you know full well it is X and Y, but Not Moist seem to be the aggressors here. They are the ones who are pushing onto X and Y. But they are at a shield disadvantage. Purples versus blues, and if XNY get a knock here, you know full well they're sending this. Completely isolated this fight at the moment. Nobody else within a POI's worth of Nowhere distance. near. And it looks like Not Moist have decided this isn't the best of ideas. Timmy's going to take a little bit of damage. Mil um, Guild, excuse me, is going to turn around just to see if he can help his teammate get out of that situation. Timmy will be safe and will be able to pop that battery. X and Y just looking down here, and I tell you what, Timmy is a little bit separated from his team, and if he's not careful, could get cut down on the path here. Wrecking Ball's available as well. There is a real chance that X and Y might just continue this aggression, continue to chase, and look to try and put Mad Maggie to full advantage. This is what they wanted to play for. They wanted KP, they wanted to start catching up on the leaderboard, they play an aggressive comp, and Not Moist are certainly on the back foot right now. Great shots coming in oh. from Walty though, oh. and all of a sudden, the advantage gets flipped on its head, and Walsey wants more. More shots coming in from the Nemesis. More shields being broken. And if you're on the side of this man right now, you're just saying, keep doing what you're doing, brother, or I'll back you up. Doesn't matter if you've got a Maggie, if you're going up against shots like that, as now Moist have the advantage. You can see Johnny's just going to be backing off to try and get close. And now XMY might just have to retreat here. So for all the aggression, it is completely counteracted by just brilliant shots from Walsey here. Whilst he just anchoring the top of this egg and managing to break a couple of eggs himself to keep Moist in a great position, gets himself up to purple as well. And now Not Moist are probably thinking, hey, I remember when you were trying to push us X and Y. Well, haven't got that kill, haven't got that limb, haven't got that person turned into a death box. We're going to go trace you down. We're going to find ourselves some more KP. X and Y very split inside a barometer right now. You have to wonder if they managed to get that banner or not. But elsewhere, back into the zone, back towards the action. And this is TSM's position right now. And they are in one of the best spots in the game. TSM have had a good day so far today as well. I mean, third place they were able to find in their earlier series. They're currently in eighth place after a disappointing performance at the last LAN. This maybe is the answer that TSM fans were desperately hoping for. 
as they seem to be performing a lot better this time around and are finding more consistent points across these group stages. As you can see, it's Timmy's <laughs> just gone down in the kill feed. X and Y answer back. This is a very delayed fight, though. Both these teams have so far to go after this fight happens. It's a very weird fight that's going down here. Walt going to fall as well. And just a reminder, this was a two versus three situation in the favor of Not Moist. Guild is now left on his own, collects one of the banners. And if I'm not mistaken, we might be finding ourselves in a one-on-one. -on -one, and it's the Maggie on the other side, which means I get an opportunity to maybe warm the vocal cords up. Because there might be a wrecking ball coming. No, Not Moist are gone! Not Moist are gone! It's a 2v3! Fight, and it will just wipe out the rest of it. It was a pointless fight to be taken, let's be honest. But they were both so deep, they kind of had to. Now, Legends Gaming, speaking of deep, they are deep in trouble right now. Amphion play, okay, the last two. Nasty is down, but they do have protection from the shield here. And much like the previous game where Falcons went out early, now we see Not Moist go out early. That is the team who's top of the leaderboards right now. That means everybody else in this lobby has an opportunity to steal away that first place. Legends Gaming at the moment not thinking about first place, they're thinking about surviving into the top 17, uh, top 16, top 15 if they can for now. But Amphi is going to get cut down by his old teammate in Nax. I struggle seeing Legend escaping <laughs> this one, but you have the Newcastle. There's always the chance. You pick up, you go down, you pick up, you go down. And they should be able to at least get back up to a two for now. But I'm really concerned about if the shield goes down shortly, they are just going to be obliterated by teams surrounding. By the way, Zone is continuing to move east. TSM are in prime position right now. Eighth place in the series. And real opportunity to pick up some big points here. They've, they've got Nasky's banner though, have Legends. And what you said, right? They've already got back up once. Hey, if uh, they uh, can get back up again, then maybe the gods are on their side. Striders have been eliminated. And if there's anything I've learned from recent Apex Legends tournaments, it's that even if you're in the game and you're a solo in the final moments, you can still win it. Legends Gaming taking so much damage at the moment. It feels like the whole, if you're in the shoes right now, Player K, it feels like the whole lobby is focusing you. And finally, it will be Fennel who apply the finishing touches to eliminate them. VK Gaming also kind of arriving to the party through the skies. And that might just take Alliance's attention away from Team Falcons. And they're going to have to take this. Castle Wall goes down. That makes this fight a little bit awkward. It makes it a little bit ugly. Tyler's gone down as well. But Unlucky, he's not going to even up these numbers. Unlucky will find one. He evens it up. And now tries to swing in as the Pathfinder. He gets behind another. Unlucky now has to deal with a Newcastle. Another one goes down. It's the re from Unlucky. He can't quite commit to the full three. His hack is close enough to finish this fight and keep Alliance in this game. Should be. Definitely close enough, but there is knockdown shields to work with. But Hakis has the beautiful Mozambiques. No attachments on it, though. It's going to be very bland, very neutral, very Picking vanilla. And now the res is probably going to come through because Hakis is being shot from another team. I just wonder if that was just a bit of miscommunication. Because the amount of damage that was done by Unlucky, you almost expected Hakis to be able to walk in and just finish that fight off. But instead, it looks like he might be thinking about... Getting the res instead, so Hackis with the big brain, big picture play will keep Alliance alive. And you saw that thought process happen very early when he dropped the respawn beacon and he instantly was saying, actually, I can get these banners and I can make sure they can get us back on our feet. GHS Professional have also gone down. 12 squads now remain as Alliance are back to the party. It's the revenge tour. It's the revenge tour. That's the desktop. Back to the game. Naughty. Popping the Barry. Will keep himself alive for now. This was a fight that was going down between Falcons and C9. It looks like Falcons are getting the barrel of it, but here we are, finally, back on the revenge tour. And it's going to be Alliance as a three who can take this fight once again. Zero with the Craver, though. You know full well that Unlucky wants to send this. He wants to make up for what he could have done previously. We're so close oh, to no! 1v3, and now Unlucky has to make up for it right here. Pushes in yet again. The Mozams are shooting. Oh! Whoa! And does have a chance, but he got Surely a not. of health. Surely not. The res! It's going to deny Alliance once more, and Falcons are going to deny even more. Zero will fly in. Looking to hunt down the final player here. Cloud9 eliminated in the meantime, but Falcons pick their poison, pick their moment, as they're looking for the Crypto, who is not showing for now. Zero needs to survive. Great use of the smoke there. Recognizing where that damage was coming from, we'll be able to get a bat off, you'd imagine. I don't know who's there. There's another invisible player on the map. <laughs> Oh, Castler is still there. They knew he was close. 
but they just couldn't find him. Guild been eliminated in the meantime as we finally find ourselves inside of our top 10. What a game this has been, by the way. Uh, if I'm unlucky, I'm fuming, by the way. <laughs> the damage that man has done in the last minute or so is nuts. So all whilst that's been happening, TSM is still sitting pretty on the east side. Phase and Noise are going to be on the southeast as well. Probably going to fight. Now elsewhere, this is the fight I was talking about. Phase now trying to hold the high ground, trying to hold this staircase. Mastiff is going to break some shields, and now it's going to probably break some hearts as well. Synetic finds one, might turn two himself. Clean wipe for FaZe Clan. They will pick up 3kp and keep themselves in this game. That has opened up things for Liquid Alienware. They come flying over FaZe Clan here, as Falcons also join. TSM now sending it onto FaZe. This is getting like a deadly area right now, as TSM do send it, but now Falcons want stuff. Falcons are closing in on this, they're pinching everyone. FaZe Clan will be eliminated. Zero thinking KP, KP, KP. More points for me, more points for Falcons. There's more damage is coming out for the IGL. And if they win this fight, they own the South East. Liquid Alienware are still in the vicinity. VK Gaming still have a couple of players alive as well, but now it does mean Falcons push themselves further and even closer to Not Moist. They are four points behind Not Moist now. It also feels like all of a sudden Falcons are starting to find a little bit of momentum. We see a res coming in for VKG as well, and you have to wonder if Falcons were aware of that, because that was just behind them on top of that building, and that could catch them off guard, but Zero looks like he's got their back. Watch. Two bullets with the Kraber, plenty with the Mozambique. He's in a great position to do so much damage as he's already taken down one member of Team Team Liquid and another will go as well. Team Liquid Alienware will be eliminated with down to four. A team that's silently going about the business, by the way. Bleed Esports, dead center of the northern side of this zone and actually in a really good position as they can watch over the likes of VKG, the likes of Falcons. They just need to really worry about Fennel at the moment. Well, inside of this building, looks like VKG and Falcons are going to be the first to engage with each other. Kraber still in the hands of Zero here. He wants to hit the shot. He's going to line it up. He's going to pull the trigger, but narrowly misses a shake of the head, a flick of the fringe. And it's a feeling maybe a little bit familiar to him. Yeah, get the Mozams out instead and just get down and dirty and involved. But he does miss a few. And that opens things up for VKG. Can we see the cleanup from Falcons? Yes, we will. Surely we will. Yes, indeed they do. But Zero will find himself on his back and not participate in the final moments of this game unless there is a miracle res to come in. Now Fennel move up as VK Gaming will be confirmed as our fourth team overall in the placement. And this makes it interesting for Falcons. I mean, you've got Fennel and Bleed engaging, and Falcons as a two might be able to sweep on this. A, if Falcons have a respawn beacon, they have an opportunity, but also as a two, they can still win this fight because there's going to be a lot of damage done between Bleed and Fennel here. Fennel taken down. Bleed stay pretty healthy. Very Will, healthy. Very, very healthy, which makes this opportunity for Falcons a little bit more difficult to take. However, Jim Byrne will find one. How will go down as well, though. Surely this is Bleed just closing this out. And Bleed Esports will be your champions in our penultimate game here on Stormpoint. But Bleedy Sports put 21 points on the board, nine kills to go alongside it. So even though I said, you know, silently went about their business, they were still winning some engagements to get to that position. Well, maybe it's not moist to win a game again as they go back and forth with Team Falcons, but it's a five point lead now for Falcons going into this last game. I was gonna say there's a few teams that might have a look oh at my. it. By the way, XMY versus TSM, and TSM been able to get a knock, make it two and should be able to clean up the rest of this. Verhost is gonna full send it and it is job done. X and Y eliminated again early on, as well as Nose Fox. They should next they'll look to maybe hit a survey beacon close oh, to the C9 are in trouble, C9 are in big trouble here. And they're getting sent on, it's VKG who are flying in and will deal with C9. They will get absolutely bopped by the PKs coming in from 951. That's VKG picking up three victims in a row, but here come Falcons. They're swinging in through the sky towards the finger on the other side. Well, Falcons, they just see there's a little bit of commotion. Maybe see an opening, maybe see a gap to get involved and try and take a position here. As Alliance also in a Bleed. little bit of a scrap. It's, it's going to be Bleed gone. as they take them down and grab all the information that they can elsewhere. Just outside this zone, TSM trying to force their way in. Team Liquid will lose one in the meantime. Elsewhere in the kill feed, you can see a little bit of a battle going down in and around that building. Jim Burton's picking up a couple of kills. Four Falcons, but TSM now have to force their way forward, force their way into zone, and they've lost the holes as they do so. This kill feed's about to light up even more. If it hadn't already, oh! TSM will survive. Take down Liquid Alienware. Now they move down to the southern side, and actually TSM will survive unless Eptrolis Laser decide to get involved here. This is a really smart play from Eptrolis. Striders have been eliminated. Legends Gaming also gone. Brutus trying to move in, trying to deal with that Devo, but he'll go down. And maybe there's a chance to clutch, but no, it's going to be TSM who are eliminated. And it will be Echolos Laser who now control the entirety of the south side of this zone. Back to the action. Back inside of the building of death. T 
Team Falcon's still alive. Not Moy's still alive as well. This EMP helps Falcons though. Falcons not playing a Crypto. They had no EMP for the Watson fences that Moist had, but now with the EMP coming through from another team, suddenly this opens things up to Falcons if they would like to push up these stairs. Not Moist, they back off, they retreat. They know the push could happen, but Falcons are playing this patiently. They try and take their way out of that bottom floor. They're trying to find them an escape room, maybe trying to find a little bit of loot as well. They might be a little bit low on meds, a little bit low on the things they need to survive on this next rotation. Falcons, one thing they don't have information of, I'm pretty sure, is that the man above the wall seat from Not Moist, he's got a devotion in his hands and he isn't going to miss too many bullets with that thing should this engagement take place in a close quarters fight. Falcons do potentially have the Dark Veil to make a rotation here, by the way. That could really help them try and avoid some of these bullets, but it could then be used by the teams that are above them as Hal's taking a lot of damage. Not Moist, if they get any sort of smell of this, they might send it, but they're not going to. But now, round five starts to close, and this is where it's about to get interesting. Eight squads remaining, currently a seven-point lead for Falcons. Not Moist just behind them, 54 points on the board for them. They know how much pressure is on this team fight. How much pressure is on this rotation? Unlucky in the kill feed, by the way, has had a stellar day of action as here comes the move from everybody. But Falcons are taking damage. Falcons are going to fall as Fennel will also go and that opens the door now for Not Moist. But Timmy's down. It's up to Walty and Guild. How far is that door open is the real question because now Guild and Walty need to survive. Somehow they need to find another five points here. Now it's just Walty. Guild's fallen as well. And FaZe, they're going to be fighting up against VKG as Not Moist get eliminated. Falcons will hold on to first place right now. They will hold on to first place. Face Clan will be eliminated as we go to our final three. And what a story this would be if Incholos Laser can hold this position for the entirety of game number six and manage to pick up the win to cap their incredible day's performance. I mean, there's a real opportunity there. Incholos Laser could take top two here. And I wonder whether they even think that maybe first place is available. If they can get all the kills, they will certainly be close. They maybe, maybe Falcons are just one point ahead too far for them. Icholos Laser then, just looking for the KP, looking for the kills, looking for the Cryptos who are hiding. There's one, VK Gaming eliminated as Icholos Laser, who have had control of this zone for so, so long, will cap their day surely with a big win in game number six. One player to deal with, he is shots, boys. Get this done, Brewers wants the moment. He wants to punch him out. And what a way to end the game it would be. What a way to end the day. For each of those laser, they will be a champs of game number six. So we'll take a look at these match results here, see exactly what that did with those 11 kill points for each of those. 23 points in total for the final match of the day. Uh, looking at the series scoreboard here, we see something fascinating. Acholo's on the top, but they lead the way with placement points, mm. 39 there. And I can tell you, I've looked at the damage. They have the most damage in the lobby, by the way, leading Falcons by more than 2,000 damage.